Hey there, it is story time with Brad, thanks to PBS Kids, and we are going to read, this may be one of the most important heroes that we do. This is our first hero with autism, Temple Grandin. If you don't know who Temple Grandin is, Temple Grandin is a scientist, she's an animal behaviorist, so she studies animals, and she also is an advocate for neural diversity, people who think differently. And all of us are different in our own ways. You're gonna see how Temple Grandin is different. And this is I Am Temple Grandin. Okay, here we go. It always starts in the same way. And this one, and you'll see in all the I Am books, they're usually right in the center. But in this one, we put Temple Grandin right on the side. We wanted her to be sitting in, in a way that's different. And it starts out, as always, I Am Temple Grandin. And it begins with the most important thing it says. There's no one like me and there's no one like you. That's what's great about being different. I was born with bright blue eyes, lots of fluffy hair, and a dimple in my chin. But that's not what makes me different. From the start, my mother knew I wasn't like anyone else. Most babies love to look into people's eyes. I didn't like that at all, and she says, why won't she look at me? Most babies love cuddling, but I would stiffen and try to pull away, and she's like, I'm just trying to hug you. Most kids start to talk by age two. I didn't. Temple, say something. Maybe she can't hear us. Do her ears work? My ears worked fine. I could hear what people were saying, but when I tried to reply, the words wouldn't come out. The only way to communicate was by screaming and flapping my arms. Please, Temple, just tell us what you want. It's frustrating when no one understands you. It may be destructive. As a child, I'd write on walls, break our vases, chew up puzzle pieces, and then spit them out. Pachoo. When I was three years old, my mother took me to a doctor. I have autism. But back then, they didn't have a name for it. Being autistic means that the way my brain works, I see and experience things differently from other people. Some sounds feel extra loud to me. Some sights are too much. Even a bright light or a spinning fan can feel too intense. She wants you to shut it off, which the music, the lights, all of it. To calm myself down, I'd enter my own little world, focusing for hours on things I loved. She's railing in the spinning pennies. Yup. How long has she been staring at that? Hours. And she doesn't get bored? Never. My mother found a wonderful speech therapist who figured out how to help me communicate. I was nearly four years old when I spoke my first word, ba, which meant ball. Ba, ba, that's right, Temple, you got it. That was Miss Reynolds who did that. It wasn't easy for me. Sometimes when people talked to me, I'd turn away, refusing to face them. Temple, please, look at me. Most people like eye contact, but for me, it felt too intense. Birthday parties were even harder for me. To my brain, all the noises, popping balloons, kids bumping into each other, it felt like the noise of a freight train. My nose was sensitive too. If someone's perfume was too strong, I couldn't focus on anything else. To calm myself down, I go back to my inner world. On the beach, I'd sit for hours letting sand run through my fingertips. I'd stare at every line on my hand like it was a map. Sometimes I'd spin myself just like a penny, round and round. It made me feel powerful, like I was in control. But my favorite thing of all, and I love this when we wrote this, my favorite thing of all was wrapping myself in a blanket and squeezing between the couch cushions. It made me feel secure. The pressure was so relaxing. This was the one hug I really loved. I daydreamed there for hours. Hours. Think about that. At five years old, I started kindergarten. I didn't realize it at the time, but my voice sometimes sounded rigid. My body movements were sometimes stiff. If someone made fun of me, I'd lose my temper. Ha ha, she sounds like a robot. Be quiet. But you know what's the best part about being different? Sometimes you have the most original ideas. What are you doing, Temple? Making a kite. It doesn't look like it'll fly. We'll see. I made my kite's wings flat, then bent up a little flap on each end. It didn't look like any other kites. But when I tied it to my tricycle, it soared. 
And I love this. It says, I've never seen a kite like that. I've never seen anything like her or anyone like her. She's definitely one of a kind. I always love to build things. My favorite book was about inventors. Cyrus McCormick made a mechanical reaper. Elias Howe made the sewing machine. That's her grandfather reading books to her. I also love asking questions over and over and over and over. Why is the sky blue? How do clouds stay in the sky? What are clouds made of? Why is the grass green? Why do tides go in and out? Everyone's brain works in its own way. Some people learn by reading. Some learn by listening. Some by doing. My brain sees the world in pictures. When I read, I turn written words into color movies. And this is literally how her brain works. If I see the phrase Great Dane, a big dog, I picture Dansk, a Great Dane I once saw at my school. Then I picture Helga, another dog I met. Then I picture my aunt's dog and then one from an advertisement. She turns that word dog into all those pictures. For a word like under, I picture being under a cafeteria table back in school. Then a submarine under the Antarctic and the Beatles singing Yellow Submarine. And from there, I watch the movie play in my head. The Great Dane is under the bridge. Great Dane under bridge. She has to picture them all and put them together one by one. That's how her brain works. My ability to see things differently is what helped me build that kite. I could see the structure of it in my head, but it also made it harder to teach me. I was too young to explain to anyone how my brain worked. Thankfully, my mother never gave up on me. This is your new school, Temple. You can do this. Just take it step by step, her mother tells her. As I said goodbye, I was rigid as a pole, unsure how to connect, but my new teachers knew how to get me involved. Hey, Temple, would you like to see our horses? Horses? Instead of forcing me to be like everyone else, they focused on the things I was interested in. Temple, would you like to hear how the horses interact? I'd love to, she tells Mr. Brooks. They figured out what talents I had, and they encouraged me to keep using them. I've never seen a model rocket built like that. How do you do it, the teacher asks. In my head, I can picture different ways to build things. Keep going, her teacher says. It's wonderful. And when I was sad, I dream of a magical machine, like the cushions on my sofa, to help soothe me and make me feel better, squeezing me tight. The most important summer of my life came during high school, when I went to visit my aunt in Arizona. On her ranch, she had a squeeze chute, which holds animals so you can give them medicine. You see the cow that it's holding. I noticed that when the panels would squeeze shut, the animals would get calmer. You see something, don't you, Temple? Can I go in and try it? At first, I was scared in the machine. I asked my aunt to squeeze the sides against me. For the first five seconds, my body panicked and went stiff. But in no time, a wave of relaxation took over. Ah, she says. For 30 minutes, I felt calm. It was the first time I ever truly was comfortable in my own skin. Back in my school, some people thought I was weird and wanted me to be, quote unquote, normal. Luckily, one teacher encouraged me to make my own squeeze machine for people. I see the pictures in my head, she would say, then follow those pictures and build it. William Carlock, her teacher, said to her, this is the first one I made out of used plywood. You know what relaxes you, Temple? Now you have to figure out why it relaxes you. You need science for that. Bring on science, she says, and college. It was one of the best lessons of my life and a lesson for all of you listening today. It's good to be weird. It's good to be weird. In fact, it can be fantastic. One night, nervous about going to college, I went up to my roof to think. The building was under construction, but I found a small door that led from the main roof to an even bigger roof with another door. And when I went through that door, the world seemed so much larger. I knew what I had to do. Like my mother said, take it step by step, little by little, from one door to the next. In college, I built a second version of my squeeze machine. Once I learned how good it felt to be held, how secure it made me feel, I finally understood what kindness was. 
The squeeze machine taught me how to pet my cat gently. Before that, I was always hugging him too tightly. Meow, the cat says. I used to think my classmates were different, but now I realized I was different too. I was autistic. I was a special individual, and now I knew what was special about me. And I know some of you out there, now you know what's special about you. From there, I found my purpose, to build things that would help everyone to be more gentle and more caring. I got right to work. As a cattle shoot operator, I started studying animal behavior. I realized that when I put my hands on an animal, I could tell what it was going through. This cow, it's scared. I can feel its nervousness, she says. I also understood that the right amount of firm pressure can really calm you down. I felt a closeness to this steer. I wanted to help these animals. I'm here, she says. I'm here for you. There you go. I'm here for you. Isn't that beautiful? To figure out why animals were upset, I'd kneel and get their perspective. She would literally kneel down to look and see how they saw things. And the guy says, the animals keep bumping into each other and getting hurt. We don't know what to do. I'd try to look at the world through their eyes. I'd study them for hours and hours. She'd look at the sun. She'd look at the animal. Look where the sun is in the sky, she said. When cattle are being driven, they may refuse to move into a rising or setting sun because it's too bright for their eyes. You're right, the farmer says. I knew what it was like to feel things at a higher intensity. Being autistic helped me understand things in ways no one else could. My visual thinking style also helped me build things in ways that they never had been built. I designed chutes and pens that were round when I noticed that cattle used to follow a curved path more easily. See, now the cattle are happy. They like following and walking in a circle. So she built a circle for them. One time we were trying to figure out how to get the cows to walk down into a bath that gets rid of all the bugs on them. For some reason, the cows wouldn't go down the ramp. She looked at the cows, she looked at their feet, she looked at the ramp, and she realized it's slippery. That's why they won't go. They're scared of falling. The cows are scared of falling. No one else thought to see it that way, but Temple Grandin did. Some people weren't happy that a woman, much less an autistic one, was telling them what to do. They said my work on cattle behavior wasn't a proper thing to study. In the end, their solutions didn't work, but mine did. Wouldn't you be scared going down a slippery ramp? She's got a point, the farmer says. To make it safer, we changed the ramp from steel to concrete with grooves for better footing. The cows started walking down calmly and safely. Right now they felt safe. All across the country, companies brought me in to help. As always, I'd study the animals. I'd work with them, not against them. The cows are too excited. They're crashing into each other, the farmer says. They want to play, she said. They can see their friends right over there. They're just like kids separated on a playground. She's right again, he says. Once we built a fence, the cows calmed down. Over and over I proved that these were thinking creatures with real feelings. She says to the cows, I love this. I love you too. From there, I took my message around the world, reminding people that if you want to understand the autism spectrum, you need to also understand the gifts it can bring. And she says in these huge lectures, I value my ability to think visually and I would never want to lose it. You know, here's my favorite part of the book. In my life, people thought I was different. They were right. I wouldn't want to be anyone else. I only want to be who I am. Being different lets me see things in a new way. It lets me see beauty that others miss. It lets me prove to the world that there's always another perspective. It could be hard to try something new. There are times when you'll be nervous or things will feel overwhelming. It's okay to feel that way. When that happens, just start with a small step. Then take another and another, one by one, little by little. When you do, here it comes, you'll make a beautiful new path that is uniquely yours. And it says, her study of cattle behavior changed the way people work with animals. Half the cattle in the US and Canada are handled in equipment she designed to treat them more humanely. 
She's now Dr. Temple Grandin. She's an author, a scientist, and a professor. Time Magazine listed her as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. One in 59 U.S. children has been identified as being on the autism spectrum. And maybe some of you are too, or you have someone in your family who is, and now you know more about them. Einstein was also, Albert Einstein was also a visual thinker. She keeps a picture of him in her house. And Dr. Grandin still gets bothered by loud noises and the itch of pants. She still needs quiet time, right? It's okay. And by the way, you know who's hidden in every book? Hidden in every book, go find it. And if you wanna know, in every book, I'll also tell you a secret today, because we're filming this at PBS Studios. Every book, the next hero is in that book. So if you wanna know who's in I Am Amelia Earhart, you can look in there and Abraham Lincoln is hidden in there. And if you wanna see in I Am Abraham Lincoln, who's the next hero, you can see Rosa Parks is hidden in there. So there is a hero hidden in I Am Temple Grandin, and it's who our next hero is. I can't tell you today. It's Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is coming. Okay, so now here comes the finale. We need people who are different. The world doesn't get better by doing things the same way. It gets better by creative and unconventional thinking. We all have gifts to give. Share what you have with the world. Share the things you love. There's not just one right way. The world is more beautiful for it. I am Temple Grandin, and I am proud to be different. And I'll show you in the end, because I love, this is the real Temple Grandin, there she is. And what I'll tell you also is, Temple Grandin helped us with this book. So I got to speak to her on the phone, and she told us what parts were right and what parts were wrong, and you can see her as a baby, and you can see her in that pose that you see right at the front of the book. Chris created that pose too. Um, and we got to spend time, and it's so much fun. I can't speak to Abraham Lincoln. I can't speak to Rosa Parks when we did their books, but I did get to speak to Temple Grand, and it was so much fun to talk to her. Um, and one of her great quotes that she said in the end, it says, the world needs all kinds of minds. So again, if you feel like you're different, if you feel like you're weird, you know what that? Wonderful, that's beautiful. We're all weird. We're all different in our own ways. And just remember, be proud to be different. Thank you for joining us on PBS Kids. Thank you for joining us for Storytime with Brad. Remember, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Reading is a superpower. And uh, look for me in the books. Look for the next hero in the books. Did you find Mr. Rogers? Because he's in there. You want me to show you where it is? I'm going to show you in case you didn't see it because you're here. Look, there he is right there. The red sweater is the giveaway. And uh, can't wait to see you for the next Storytime. Thanks for joining us today.